Terry Reid came out with what I think is a disastrous statement, and I'll, t I'll read it to you, and then I'll tell you why I think it's disastrous. He said, what I think should be in the bill is something that I will vote for according to my conscience when we get this bill to the floor. But I have a responsibility to get a bill to the Senate floor that will get 60 votes that we can proceed toward. Now, wait a minute. He just said he's going to vote his conscience, but he's going to get a bill no matter what. Isn't that great? No. That's terrible. I'll break down the code words for you. The code words are, yeah, sure, don't hold it against me because I'm going to vote for the bill that I like with the public option, and that's a real health care reform bill. But I'm going to actually do my best to make sure that's not the one that gets the vote. The one that's going to get the 60 votes is the one that I theoretically don't like, but even though I'm the Senate Majority Leader, I will bring up and push for anyway without a public option. So there is no real health care reform. So what Harry Reid is saying here, I think, is a really bad sign. And he has said in the past, oh, no, we need Max Baucus, and we need the Republicans to be with us on this bipartisan bill. All right, now let's break down why that's absolutely a crack of a lot of things. Okay, let's just say excrement. Uh, number one, this has to be obvious to everyone. You do not need the Republicans for a damned thing. You have 60 people inside the Democratic caucus. Not only can you get over the majority, you can get over filibusters. You don't need a single Republican vote. So when he says, oh, I got to get to 60 one way or another, he's not telling you the truth. He doesn't need Republicans to get to 60. All he needs is Democrats. So what he could do is say, and this is, and I promise you I'm not making it overly simple, and say, oh yeah, he could do this easily, but he can't. He can all, all they do is they do put real health care reform with a public option, and then they say, all the Democrats, you got to give an up or down vote on it. You might not even like the bill. You might not be perfectly happy with it, but you have to give us an up or down vote on this. Then he can lose four, six, eight Democrats. He could lose all of the Republicans and still get it passed. It's so simple if you had the will to do it. But he doesn't. Here's another quote. That's my number one responsibility, referring to getting a bill that'll work and get to 60 votes. And there are times that I have to set aside my personal preferences for the good of the Senate and I think the country. My ass, okay? If you cared about uh, what you think is the right thing for health care reform, you can easily do it. Now, why is uh, Harry Reid going in this direction? Let us not forget that he is in election year, basically in this cycle, 2010 he's up for election, and uh, he's not polling well in Nevada. So Harry Reid, being who he is, thinks, hey, you know what, maybe I'm not polling well because I'm not strong enough, which is his clear problem, as we've shown a million times on the show. No, he thinks, no, 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 no. I should be weaker and go more towards, and, and be more conciliatory towards the right. No, 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 I'm, look, come on, Republicans, even though I'm the Senate Majority Leader, I'm going more towards the right. Aren't I a good boy? No, Harry, you're not a good boy. So, and now, if this is a Senate majority leader, and they're pushing in this direction, that is bad news. All right, now, there is good news uh, from Nancy Pelosi, who claims she's going to go in the other direction. Then I'll tell you if it's true or not. She says, you know what, it's time to take on the private health care insurance industry, because they're the ones lobbying to kill real health care reform. And here's her quotes. They are the villains in this. They have been part of the problem in a major way. She said, um, it's almost immoral what they're doing. Of course, they've been immoral all along. They're doing everything in their power to stop a public option from happening, and the public has to know about it. Now, that's a great statement. That's strong. I like it. It's right. Uh, now, where's the problem? Well, the problem is, what are they spending their money on? Yeah, they're spending it on ads. Yes, they're spending it on uh, Republicans. And yes, they're spending it on right-wing talk show hosts who try their damnest to come up with nonsense to try to stop this bill. More of, not, more of that nonsense we'll talk about a little bit later in the show and their crazy uh, ways of attacking this bill. Okay, but you can get past all of that because you have 60 senators in the Senate, right? No, her, what she doesn't tell you is that the real problem is that that healthcare industry lobby bought a lot of Democrats. They bought a lot of Democrats in the House, and they bought a lot of Democrats in the Senate. And now, since she's the head of the Democrats in the House, 
she can't come out and say that. So she says the villains are the healthcare industry. Yeah, partly true, but also part of the villains are the people in your party that they bought. Now here, I'll give you a perfect example why that's the case. So the Blue Dog Democrats just got a concession today from Henry Waxman in his committee to get a new version of, of their, their version of the bill into the House to consider out of, out of the Energy Committee. Okay, so what was the concession? Well, remember, the Blue Dog Democrats are conservative Democrats who care about fiscal responsibility. So the major concession they got was to water down the public option. You won't go with Medicare rates. No, you'll go with rates that are negotiated. And th that'll be higher rates, meaning, yes, doctors will get paid more in some health care industry Companies will get paid more, uh, and who will pay them more? We will, through our premiums, right? So now, wait a minute. How does that help fiscal responsibility? Well, it turns out it doesn't. According to several reports, including one from Politico, in fact, it costs the government $60 billion more. Now, that's a conservative estimate. Then we've got an estimate here from a, a private healthcare industry, not a healthcare, healthcare analysis group. It's called the Commonwealth Fund. And in June 2009, they said that if you go with this compromised version of the bill, because that was already a possibility that was out there, they analyzed it. They say over the long run, it costs the government a trillion dollars. Okay, a trillion dollars more than it would if you just went with the public option. Now, look, forget the, that estimate. Let's go with the conservative one, $60 billion. Why, if you claim that you want to make this less expensive for the government, did you just agree and demand on a compromise that makes it more expensive for the government? Because your concern isn't to be conservative or to be fiscally responsible. Your concern is to get paid back for the guys who have been paying you all this money, the lobbyists. They're the ones who went through this compromise. It is so transparent. Now, how, how are they getting the blue dogs to heal like this, the healthcare industry? Well, you know what might help? This number here. Healthcare interest, according to the Associated Press, in the first six months of 2009, you know how much money they spent uh, lobbying, meaning getting money to the politicians, the ads, et cetera, et cetera? $262 million. That is well over a million dollars a day. Now, hmm, do you think that $262 million going into the pockets of people in Washington, D.C. might affect how they vote? No, probably not. Hey, the rest of the press, ignore that. No, no, you keep calling those Democrats conservative Democrats, or even worse, centrist Democrats. No, no, don't mention that they're bought and paid for by the lobbyists. Yeah, talk about generally how, oh, lobbyists, uh, you know, that's an issue, and Obama wants to tackle that, and, and that could cause problems. But don't tell the American people how it causes problems, who it bought. You have Max Baucus, the guy in the Senate who's holding things up now, and who's trying to kill the public option. He's a Democrat of Montana. Do you know what his nickname is? It's the senator from K Street. That's his nickname. Because a great majority of his funds are not raised from Montana. It's a tiny percentage of the money he raises comes from his home state. The overwhelming majority comes from K Street. That's why he's not the senator from Montana. He's the senator from K Street. Now, you think that might be relevant as that he's the head of that committee, the finance committee, who's holding up the bill? and trying to make sure it doesn't have a public option? Do you know how much Max Baucus has taken from the healthcare industry? Four, almost, four, by today probably is already, four million dollars. You think four million dollars doesn't make a difference to him? Guess who seven out of his top ten contributors are? You guessed it, the healthcare lobby. <laughs> and yet when you see reports in the press, Max Baucus, centrist Democrat, conservative Democrat, man who cares about fiscal discipline, no, he cares about getting paid. And he's getting paid by the healthcare industry. So, I would say that the real struggle here and what will determine if we get actual healthcare reform or a lot of chicanery posing as healthcare reform is if you can get the Democrats, to all 60 of them in their caucus, to agree to give a real healthcare reform bill an up or down vote. Are you going to do it? And then, hey, look, Max Baucus, you want to keep getting paid? All right, you didn't join a Republican filibuster, but you voted against the bill. I got no problems. You say you voted your conscience. <laughs> conscience, that's a good one. All right, I don't care, man. Do any fraud you like. 
But the one thing I care about is a real bill that gets an up or down vote. Now, given what's happening here, it's not encouraging. Obviously, the Reid statement is really bad. And then when you come back to Pelosi, she says, you know, she goes on and she bashes the insurance guys again. She says, they've had a good thing for going for a long time at the expense of the American people and the health of the country. This is the fight of our lives. She's exactly right. Then she turns around and says, well, I kind of like the version in the, that came out of the health committee in the Senate. And that is very similar to the compromise they just did with the blue dogs in the House in the Energy Committee. Now, I know there's a lot of committees and it starts to get confusing. But basically, let me break this down for you, too. Because it's, it, we can be simple. There are three versions, okay, of this bill. Uh, the version we like with a strong public option, that's already uh, come out of uh, two other House committees, okay? That's the good version. Then there's the bad version with no public option. That's Max Baucus's version in the Senate Finance Committee. That is useless and not health care reform at all. Now, there is a middle version, and that's the one that involves this compromise in the House and the one out of the Health Committee in the Senate. And now Pelosi's saying, well, that was not so bad. And that's the watered-down version. Now, what do you think we're going to get? My guess is, if we're lucky, we'll get the watered-down version, the one that costs $60 billion more, the one that says, well, the public option, not so much. Yes, that's in there, but you know what? We're going to uh, not have it at Medicare rates, so it's going to cost more. Well, if it costs more, then I don't like it as much, uh, not, for the, not only for the government, but for us. Remember, my main priority is get lo- health insurance that costs less, right? Uh, either we're going to get that watered-down version or we're going to get the total joke coming out of, Baucus's committee that has no public option. Is it possible that after all this fighting that the progressives are strong enough and they stick together enough that they get the actual strong public option part? Oh, well, that would be great. But right now it's looking less and less likely. Lynn Woolsey, though, uh, Progressive Caucus co-chair, says, Many of us favor a single-payer system standing up here today, but we have compromised. And uh, she says, Uh, we already compromised a single-payer system. Now we want, quote, a plan with a meaningful public option, and we can compromise no more. Now, the number one thing you got to do is understand what the reality of this is and who's really holding it up. And it is about 10 senators that are are the most important. And what they have to do, they have to give us an up or down vote on a strong public option. Once we understand that, then we can take the battle to them. Unfortunately, the press so far does a terrible job of explaining that. In fact, they help the propaganda of those guys by pretending that they actually care about the deficit and that they actually are voting their conscience and that they're either centrist or conservative when, in fact, all they care about is is their corporate donors.